this is one way to enjoy your morning. an adder ready to strike hello oh, hello how are you getting on ready for the adventure pal let's go then <laughs> the gruesome twosome are back in action. I'm joined with Hubert. Say hello. Hello. Welcome to Kilpatrick. <laughs> He's just ruined my intro. Aye, so we've come to the lovely little western coastal village of Port Patrick. Some fantastic rocks and geology about here. Perfect for photography. And as you'll have seen, there's lovely turquoise waters. It's kind of famous for that. So we're just heading down off the southern upland way down into the wee village and then we're going to go up those cliffs and see what we can find Nice wee meal there, aye? Aye, I need, need a good meal, pal on Port Patrick We can't let me see it's nice. No be rain. No be rain at all. It's gonna rain. Oh, there's no real purpose for today's trip. Other exactly. Than... <laughs> there's no real purpose for today's trip. Exactly. Are you quite finished? Why? <laughs> Originally we had planned to go to Mowarka in Galloway, which is one of the remaining hills for me to do. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of Galloway, so it's quite a long trip and the forecasts were quite bad and there's been a lot of flooding so instead we just decided to come out and enjoy ourselves head down to Port Patrick and walk the cliffs to see what compositions are about and uh, see if we can find a nice place to pitch so let's head up the cliffs and we'll see I'm going to pitch here, uh, Hubert's going to pitch there, Coops has got a stone. The ground is quite stony underneath so we had to batter the, the pegs in. I'm not very happy with this. Here, if you can see it, there's an indentation in it and I think that's because it's pitched lower here than it is over there and I could raise that but then the wind's going to be hitting this side so I'll just live with it tonight. We've got about an hour and 45 minutes until sunset but we're gonna start exploring the place see what compositions we can find see if we can get any nice shots i've got a couple in mind uh, i think hubert's gonna go the opposite direction though i may join him and once we've done that once the sun is set we'll go back to the tents get some scran in the go Edinburgh 
Nah, mate, it's Glasgow. Ah, Glasgow. That's alright. Sunset's done. Back at the tents. Came back. The tent was very slack looking. So I did a wee bit of investigating, thinking, you know, it was just the Sill Nylon had just settled. And it wasn't. The pole, uh, the bottom section, was actually slipping. And luckily, Hubert's a big tall bugger. And he had a 140 centimetre pole, so I've just snaffled that. You hear that? What did say? I used your trekking pole. Hi, trekking pole. I am a broken one on Isle of Rome, place calling Atlantic Cory. I'm, um, I'm in so lucky when I'm in, uh, still alive. Why? I'm in fault 40, 14 meters down. And did you hurt yourself? I am hurt everything. <laughs> it was covered in bruises. But I have used this trekking pole and it is tight as a drum. I also adjusted the back, which you can see here. It's now nice and straight. So that's good. Maybe it happened for a reason. Sorry, Fellman Dave. Pot noodle and mashed at you again. It's really good. Go and see Hubert's tent now. This is the Zastrugi Vaquita. And you got a good idea of the space in here. It's a hundred space here, to be honest. Lots of space. Millions of pockets in the inner. Oh, it's pockets all, all over the ground, uh, that, uh, that side of the tent. Hubert is over six feet. He's really tall. And this is him fully extended. I feel like I have a plenty room here. Look at all that. The porch area is huge. That's the Osprey Atmos. AG 65 litre, so it's quite big. It's got his tripod, and you see all of this. And I believe this tent comes with a footprint, footprint as well, mm -hmm. so this whole area can get covered. And you can actually use the tent without the inner, and the footprint covers the full base of the tent. You can put some wet socks here if you want to, something a towel. A wee line. Do you know how much it weighs? Uh, kilo 70. So 1.7 kilo, which is not bad at all. It's been a month since I've actually been out and camped and this has been a, a cracking day for it. Really enjoyed being out with Hubert and just talking nonsense. The wind has picked up a bit, it's not hitting the tent but I can hear it on the waves. The forecast did say it was to pick up quite strongly at about 1, 2, 3 in the morning but it wasn't to last. Tomorrow it's, I think it's to rain quite a lot. It's nice and dry just now, sky's kind of clear. Anyway, I'm going to drink this tea, hit the hay, get a good night's sleep. So I will see you in the morning. It's... 10 past 1 and as scheduled, the winds have picked up. Woke me up. Get it? The waterproof cover for the zip on the outside's only got two bits of velcro. When the wind hits it, it makes that stupid propellery sound. At first I thought it was the guy, but then it lick coops out for the pee. <sighs> and that's when I realised it was that, so I've tried to flatten it, but it's just not working. I think it's just a wind direction thing, so we just have to deal with it. The gusts are quite strong, definitely over what I tested in my last video. The tent's kind of bouncing about, but the pole is rock solid and the um, pegs are all fine, I've checked them. They haven't budged, so it's just a case of putting up with the noise. am now and the rain has started and the winds are actually pretty violent now. So much rugged night sleepy. I don't know if we'll be getting a sunrise. We'll just have to see um, six o'clock 
probably get a nut, open the door and see what the situation's like. Might be good, the wind might be pushing in some... The wind might be pushing in some interesting cloud formations or whatever, or it could just be totally grey. Time will tell. I really don't understand the people that say this is enjoyable. This isn't enjoyable, this is... Whenever you close your eyes, try and go to sleep and something like that happens, your instincts automatically say you're not safe. Now I'm not saying I'm not safe. Um, I'm, very, I'm keeping a very close eye on how the tent's performing and I can go into the castle if the um, the proverbial hits the fan. It's quite an extended one. Is that impressed? <laughs> you just want to sleep, don't you? Red alert. <laughs> My god. It's 6 a.m. and the weather is worse than before. It was supposed to die off in two hours, but obviously not. Um, so we're getting heavy, blustery winds. You can hear a wee bit of rain, it's been heavier than that, it just keeps coming on and off. And I would say, good morning. <laughs> it's not a good morning. I haven't even put my head out to check if there's going to be any light because there's no chance. I need to check in Hubert. I've shouted off. Him. I've shouted across a few times, but he hasn't replied. But I keep hearing flapping as if his tent's open. Quick. I don't know, I'll try. That's that. <laughs> Hubert, I would, uh, don't know, start getting ready. The weather's not great. I think so. I mean, sunrise is in like 10 minutes. No. Everything looks nice and tight. It's absolutely pissing it down, man. So, my weather app says 35 miles per hour. 48, man. 48. 48 miles per hour. And the hex peak has won the game. I am so proud of this tent. Fantastic. I'm so, so happy with this. Does the struggle just blow apart? Hubert, get it into this room. I, I want, I want it to be... <laughs> Literally, just as I was about to start filming, Hubert's tent flew away. He'd taken his bag out of it, so there was nothing in it. The wind caught it and just dragged it out the ground. It would appear that the pegs they send with this are these wee things, they're really not very long, they're about four or five inches long, and they're really thin. Um, the difference is I've used my nine inch nails. You can see there's been a bit of movement there. Um, that really helps to hold it. I can't believe I didn't catch that on film, but it 
literally just went woof. Absolutely mental. So in third place at 25 to 35 mile an hour wins is the Lanshan 2 out of the game. At number 2 at 48 mile an hour there's a Strugi. Decided it wanted to fly like Aladdin's carpet. And at number one, we haven't found conditions yet that will harm this thing. I'm so happy, honestly. A brutal assault by the wind. No match for the hex peak. It sticks like a limpet to the ground. I really love the way it moves with the wind. Absolutely brutal. Oh. Eh. I can barely open my eyes with the, with the rain. Panging in my eyes really stings. It's like hailstones. Oh. Oh. This is one way to enjoy your morning. Oh. I am so glad we did not go to Mowaka. That would not have been funny. 